What's up, guys? TrickDriver101.com. Sorry for the pause. So let's talk about auto. Auto, the autonomous vehicle, the self-driving truck. Let's deal with let's deal with the first part right there. Oh, by the way, this is truck driver. Uh, Ken, <laughs> this is truck driver 101. I'm Big Ken. Been driving for ten years, and I also did a book. It's at truckdriverbooks.com for new drivers. All right, let's get down to business. All right, so auto is this self-driving truck. Let's deal with the first part of self-driving. When they say self-driving, what they don't what the impression the impression they give is that. I can flip this truck on, go in the back, drink me some alcohol, and have me a partie. No, you can't. <laughs> okay. All this technology has one default. And that default is if it stops working to turn it over to the driver. Um the system that auto is trying to create is um they were bought by Uber. Um, I believe that's how it works. They were bought by Uber. It's kind of a convoluted situation but they were bought by uber uber uh, i think they spent 680 million dollars for them and uh, their goal is to create an autonomous driving truck and uber's hoping to kind of cash in and uh, create do what they did for taxis and create this new system where they'll have cheaper uh, prices there's a lot of holes with that that idea um but bottom line is that uh, trucking is, you know, it's the autonomous truck. First of all, is not new. Uh, a while ago, very well, long while ago, we used to have an autonomous form of trucking, which basically was going to take the truck over in accidents. The company kind of went away. Um, I don't know if auto might be that company or not, but the company kind of went away because uh, the bottom line is it was screwing up. Uh, you know, it's like the myth of the automatic transmission that gets all this great mileage. <laughs> you know, uh, I work at a trucking company. We got automatic transmissions and many of them get crappy mileage. And I don't hear anybody going, oh, well, that's because of what? You know, we got uh, collision detection, which is supposed to work great. And it doesn't. And it's stopping the truck at bridges and everything else. And again, I don't hear all these perfectionists. Um, you know, I don't hear them talking about it. Uh, and I think this company, sadly, uh, Uber has made a tremendous mistake. They've depended on the stereotype, I think, of trucking, which is we have all this money. Uh, the trucking companies are making all this money and there's all this money in shipping and they don't really understand it. No, there's not a lot of money in shipping. The truth is we have we are an industry that hasn't had a real raise. I mean, many of the prices that freight is getting hauled for today was hauled for the same price back in the 1970s. Now, back to auto. Auto's goal is to create a $30,000 kit that will hook up to a truck and turn it into an autonomous vehicle. Uh, and that's a tremendous goal, but I, I'm pretty sure that's a tough goal to, to make happen for $30,000, um, which would knock any truck up to $130,000, uh, not to mention maintenance and uh, everything else. And plus the fact that ultimately the vehicle if it screws up, turns it over to a driver who is now going to drive a tenth of the time, most of the time. And plus, that includes whether the accident is even avoidable when the driver takes over. I think the saddest part is to hear DOT and FMCSA sound like they're just going to take a back seat and have zero accidents. And I talked about that, which they can't do. You can't have zero accidents because of a machine. Machines don't work all that well because they're built by human beings. <laughs> The same people out there who make mistakes on the road when they're driving are the same people taking shortcuts, watching Netflix at work and calling themselves engineers. OK, the same incompetent jackasses are the ones making this right. Not to mention, we're not even going to go in how the trucking company, how trucking now has all these recalls ever since they started going overseas to make trucks. Right. So at some point, we got to realize that. I don't think you can create a, a truly autonomous truck, truly autonomous, not this bullshit autonomous, truly autonomous, right? For 30 grand, I think you're going to have to spend some money. Okay. Um, the other part is let's talk about autonomous. Um, and I don't know if, I don't think I, I explained it fully, but let's, let's break it down. We're going to break it down. Like Tesla does Tesla 
breaks it down like this. This I think there's like three, there's three different ones and I'm going to break it down three. There might be four, but I'm going to break it down the way I understood it. And these are in my own words. So the first version is assisted, right? It's like what we have now where if you're too close to a truck or a car or a sign or a bridge <laughs> on the interstate that you're not about to hit, uh, you're, your um, collision detection device activates and slows your vehicle down, right? That's pretty much like the first version, except it also does it on the sides. It also does it based on, let's say you're coming up at exit too fast, something like that. It's kind of, it's uh, assisting you to drive. Uh, that's why most people don't talk about it, but the new Teslas after that guy's death, who was, by the way, he was watching TV and his truck, his vehicle was driving and it, saw something and that it couldn't adjust for it so it turned over controls to the human like it's supposed to and the human not thinking thinking that this is a computer that's better than him so now he can be distracted and not worry about it uh was watching tv uh the mystery about it is one tesla never told anybody how they knew they were watching tv aka i'd be a little worried about the monitoring what you're doing uh and two uh the real and there, there may be an explanation for that, but it, it didn't seem to be a question that got answered. I'm just saying I couldn't find it. So two, when you tell people something's autonomous, right, they believe it's autonomous. When people originally told this story about auto, everybody kept saying it's it's self-driving truck. It drove itself for two hours. No, it didn't. Right. A driver sat there ready to take over if it fucked up. OK. He did go to the back in the story that he said, but he was not supposed to do that. And this is one of the problems with autonomous trucks, because if a car loses control, it's just going to take out another car, too. But if a driver is in the back sleeping or bullshitting and his vehicle is fucks up and is no longer driving and it says turning over control to the human being and you're sitting in the back texting or fucking off. Right. People about to die. A lot of people about to die. Right. So I'm not sure (laughs) if this is going to achieve the outcome because it's going to be years before you get to a point where you can remove the driver completely from the truck and that you're going to have some serious fatalities up until that point. I mean, it's one thing when a little guy in an Uber, you know, crashes into a car or a wall or something. If that guy was driving a semi truck, whatever he hit would have been hit plus something else. (laughs) <laughs> okay when we're, we're, it's this is not you know you can lose control of your little shit battery car right but you can't lose control of a semi you know i wouldn't worry about this too much guys we've had this shit before like a shit is it's never worked well and in the way it's designed it would be a while you got at least 10 years 15 years before they even get close to possibly replacing you, especially auto. They're giving a lot of attention to auto because Uber bought them, but it seems like a bad buy because you've got your, first of all, this is just the first part of their, their idea of streamlining shipping because I'm sorry, uh, the real money in trucking, the real money in being a trucking company is not to be one. They repeat that the real money in being a trucking company is not to be one. I would rather ha- look at FedEx and look at the track record of FedEx. Look at UPS and look at the track record of UPS. Okay? Then look at the U.S. government shipping. The Postal Service. You know what I'm talking about, right? What's the difference? The government owns everything. Right? FedEx don't own all their trucks. They try not to. UPS does the same thing. Because the real money is in controlling the logistics. That's why trucking companies got lease purchase programs growing out their ass. When I first got in this industry, that was a rarity to have a lease purchase program, right? Now, they're everywhere. Everybody got a lease purchase program. Why? Because there's no money in owning a truck. The real money is streamlining, right? Is controlling the whole amount of freight. And there's nothing that's going to stop your jet stream, right? Worse than a big fat semi truck that has recalls on it that needs repairs that's going to need tires excuse me the i mean look at fedex fedex's biggest success is that they don't own their they don't own their own equipment they let the drivers worry about that 
I mean, if you were collecting money, who would you rather be in the trucking industry? The bank collecting interest at Snyder, at Warner, or would you rather be the person trying to figure out what recall do you have to deal with this week? What other crap did, is going on? Did the driver quit and all that shit? Right. Because when they on up, he's an independent contractor. Right. But if we got a we got a brokerage house, we can find us a driver. <laughs> you know, I mean, the real money is like, let's look at Warner, for instance. Warner, I believe, I don't know if they still do, but back when I worked there, they owned Warner Ladder. Right. So Warner owned Warner Ladder. So you go pick up Warner Ladders and you would drive them and deliver them. Warner got the money from the creation of the product. They got the money for broken the load. They got the money from delivering the load. <laughs> right. They got all the money. That's the dream. That's the, that is the future of a lot of companies. That's what they want to go to. Don't get me wrong. Making the product, maybe not. But controlling, having a warehouse, having a brokerage, that's where the money is. Being the best logistics company. There is zero dough in owning a fucking semi truck. It is just too big, too bulky, and too expensive. By the time, you know, I mean, it's it's just a reality. And I was reading this article and they started talking about, well, this person can, I was, well, no, I was watching online and this guy started talking about, this person can drive all night. This vehicle cannot drive all night safely. No, it can't. The current system, even if it, if, if it works, if it, they get it up right now working, it requires a driver to sit there all night to make sure it doesn't fucking crash. That's how it works. <laughs> Tesla, you can't drive. If you have a Tesla, you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel or the Tesla will not use the it will disengage the automated driving system. That's the way it fucking works after the guy died. All right. None of this shit is they keep reporting this shit is fully autonomous. It's not. It's not. This isn't an airplane in the middle of the air that has thousands of feet to fuck up. This is on the ground as an inch between you and somebody's baby standing on the fucking curb. And if you don't believe me, listen to Leo Laporte. Leo Laporte talks about his Tesla vehicle. And literally there was a bag of cement in the fucking road. The first thing he did was grab the steering wheel and took over. This is before they added the program to stop people from letting go of the steering wheel when the automated system is uh, engaged. He did that. Why did he do that? Well, because he realized after driving it for a while, it's a prototype piece of shit and it barely works. <laughs> and occasionally it will screw up and he didn't want to die. So he had control of his you know, his fucking computer. So anyway, don't worry about that shit is my point. There's a lot of problems they got to overcome. It's not going to be replacing us overnight. And it is not truly a self autonomous driving vehicle. All right. It ain't data. <laughs> right. It's not data from Star Trek. It's not walking up to you going. Yes. Uh, yo. Yes. Yo. I'm data. And I'm here to serve and protect and deliver. <laughs> No, no, no. There's no robotic rednecks. God damn it. All our rednecks are original from Alabama, Missouri, Mississippi. <laughs> and we're proud of them. And we got a long way. Now, in 10 years, they can make some serious, serious breakthroughs. Right. But I don't think as far as the Uber part, I think they fucked themselves because there's just no money in owning trucks. But that's a whole nother story. I talked about it already. I'll talk to you guys later. That's my little rant on that. Good luck. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the future won't happen. I just don't see it happening the way they think it is because I think they've miscalculated. <laughs> uh, you know, you think they look at FedEx and UPS and how people praise these companies and the fact they don't own their own equipment. They're a finance company. Well, they're not really even a finance company. They just try to do everything they can to keep you in business and you have to keep the truck running and they just keep making all that kinds of money. <laughs> anyway, guys, truckdriver101.com. Hope that belays some fears.